Could a new law show a surge in foreclosures? Welcome to the show that takes up no more than five minutes of your time, but could help you gain massive real estate knowledge. It's Five Minutes in Real Estate with best selling author Shane Willis. All right, so as we're recording this right now, this week's episode, we are one day away from the presidential election. I'm recording this on November 7th, uh, and if you're anything like me, you will be glad when November 8th comes along, we find out who the president is, and we can stop seeing all the nasty commercials and advertising that has taken over all the airwaves. I went online, I've seen stuff, you know, if I'm watching a YouTube training video, guess what I have to suffer through beforehand. One side's ads telling me that I need to vote tomorrow and telling me why I need to vote for them. I get it. I understand the necessary evil behind it. But boy, let me tell you, I'm, I'm kind of glad that tomorrow we find that out and all that stuff goes on and we can get back to that thing we call, oh, what's it called again? Life. Anyways, I'm not going to talk about presidential elections. If you heard my story two weeks ago, I don't care who you vote for. Go vote, but I don't care. Uh, what I am going to talk about, however, is something that happened in the Florida State Supreme Court on November 3rd that affects us in real estate. This podcast is five minutes in real estate, so here we're going to talk about, um, I don't know, real estate. One of the things the Supreme Court ruled was on foreclosure timelines. Let me kind of let you know what happens. Florida is a judicial state, which means in order to foreclose, you have to go through the courts. Or the courts had a statute of limitations to complete a foreclosure of five years. And what we saw some people doing was dragging the foreclosure action out, especially in the heyday when they had tens of thousands of these in the courts, just clogging the courts. People would drag it out, file motion after motion after motion. Well, that clock kept ticking. And if you could get all the way to the five-year point, your statute of limitations is over, and the bank started to really get limited on their options. Even though they lent you the money, they get real limited on their options on what they can do to recollect collateral. This new ruling basically says that if a foreclosure case gets involuntarily dismissed, then the five-year timeline resets and starts over again. Now, there's going to be a couple of people, many people in this state, that believe this new ruling is going to see an uptick in foreclosures in the next 12 to 24 months. Stuff that the banks thought were going to be uh, pushed out past the five years so they almost give up, but now the attorneys have new life. They can get the involuntary dismissal the clock starts over again. Now they can actually finalize the foreclosure because the people just literally are not paying. And I'm sorry, you can't live in a property if you're not making your mortgage payment. It's kind of like not, make, not making your tax payment. You're not going to live in the property. Sooner or later, the bill comes due. So there's a lot of people that believe the next 12 to 24 months will actually see an uptick in foreclosures in this state. And statewide, I've seen the report that came out uh, with the end of October's numbers, and we're actually at a nine-year low for foreclosure filings. So, you know, you're talking 2005, almost, or 2007, the heyday when foreclosures started. 2008 was when we really started to see a lot of filings, but we're at a nine-year low right now. But this new rule said the banks get basically a do-over. Now, Justice Barbara Parente, I have never been able to pronounce her last name, but it's Justice Barbara. We're just going to call her Justice Barbara from the Florida Supreme Court, okay? She actually wrote in her opinion for this ruling that came out, when a mortgage foreclosure action is involuntarily dismissed, the effect is revocation of the acceleration, which then reinstates the borrower's right to continue to make payments. So basically, the court is saying when it gets dismissed, the part of the mortgage note that we all signed saying that if you miss a payment, the bank can call all of it due. It's called the acceleration clause in your mortgage, in your mortgage note. It says 
if the foreclosure gets dismissed, that acceleration clause gets revocated or pulled away. Now the borrower can go back to making more payments again. So you actually could work this out, make payments and keep the house. But if, um, if you miss a payment again, then the bank can start over. That five-year time frame can start over. Because it used to be we'd work it out, but the five-year time frame started from the day you first missed your payment. Well, that's that's no bueno. So this new ruling says, mm, okay, we actually get to start over again. Um, I do think that this may cause some new foreclosures to come in. Um, I do think that uh, there could be some foreclosures we thought people thought they were just going to be able to stay in the house not make payments that they're going to have to be they're going to have to move the, the payments are going to be due now I don't think it's going to affect us drastically because a lot of the foreclosures have already kind of worked their way through the system we do have you know everybody talks and speculates about that shadow inventory that we have here in this state because we you we were one of the leading states in the foreclosure market uh, we led the country into the foreclosures, and we pretty much let them out. But uh, we do still have a shadow inventory. There's still some stuff there uh, that needs to work its way through the system. And to be honest, this may be something that gives the banks the rights to come back and go, okay, you haven't made your payment in seven years. Now, I understand we can all complain, well, they shouldn't have given me the loan. Well, we have to take some responsibility as the borrower, too. Uh, I'm not anti-bank. I'm not anti-borrower. But in this case, I think that both parties need to kind of take a little bit of the uh, blame, if you will. So keep that in mind as you know anybody or if you're talking to someone that's going through a foreclosure and they feel like that timeline is going to come to an end, no, if it gets uh, released, if it comes out of the course and gets involuntarily dismissed, the timeline now starts over. There's some knowledge for you. I hope that helps. If you're not subscribed over to the podcast, make sure you visit, 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 I can't talk today, visit shanewillis.com forward slash podcast, that is a plural word, and subscribe today. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week.